little bit of that, Sister Childs. I'll be with you. Turn, stand, stand where you have 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Stand to your feet. Just like that, we are in 2023. And I said yesterday, now we have to start remembering to write on our checks and in our letters 2023. It's going to take me till about June or July before I start getting that thing right. <laughs> We'll be putting 2022 all the way to halfway through the year. But no, the clock has changed. Amen. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5 and 1, for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in heaven. For in this we groan, earnestly 2nd Corinthians 5 chapter 2 we groan earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven verse 3 if so be that being clothed we should not be found naked for we that are in this tabernacle do groan being burdened not for that we would be unclothed but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Let's skip down to verse 17. This is where I really want to go. Therefore, well, let's start at 16. Wherefore, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Somebody say new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You can be seated in the presence of God. I'm going to say what I probably say every Sunday. It's not my endeavor to be very before you very long. <laughs> it is not my, my uh, desire that I will be before you very long. But one thing I want to do is, I haven't done this in a while. Sister Charles, keep playing what you're playing. I like that. Get up and greet somebody. Tell them Happy New Year. Tell them you love them. 
Amen. So go ahead and take the opportunity to go greet somebody. Just tell them you love them just briefly. Stretch your legs a little bit. Amen. Come on, everybody. Uh, get up and greet somebody up in the pool pit. Y'all go ahead and let's walk around, ladies. And somebody watch Madison, though. <laughs> Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Long time no see. You are enough. Forever enough. More than enough. More God bless you. Come on and clap your hands for Jesus today. Come on, clap your hands for Jesus. That was so beautiful. I believe in the humanity of church as well, that we not so focused on the theology and the religiosity of it, but that we also focus on the here and now and uh, having relationships and connecting with people. And we, I tell you what, yesterday we had an amazing time in doing that. There were people I talked to yesterday during a consecration service that uh, I hadn't talked to in a long time. Just speaking to, I always speak to everybody after church, but I had a chance to talk to individuals. Amen. The Bible says in, in our text today, in um, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, that we are new creatures. But before that, in the first verse, it says, we have an earthly house. Anybody know what the Bible is talking about? House of this tabernacle. House of this tabernacle. Verse 1 in 2 Corinthians 5. What did I say? Yeah, 2 Corinthians 5 and 1. What is the, what is, anybody know what it's talking about? Give me a thumbs up if you think you know what the term earthly house. Okay? Yeah? Yeah, somebody shout it out. Give me a couple of answers. But, Tabernacle, okay, tabernacle is connected with earthly house, okay, yes. What is it talking about? What is it talking about? The earthly house of this tabernacle. What is it referring to? Our body. That's the word I was looking for, our body. Paul says, for we know that if this earth, earthly tabernacle were dissolved, what does it mean to dissolve? <laughs> yes. Okay, it fades away. That's why you have more aches and pains. Who was that talking yesterday? I think that was uh, oh, Sister Dudes. Said, I see feel her age. I'm not gonna announce her age online, but she don't look it at all. <laughs> but she said she's starting to feel that. Not, not been saying that about myself. I can't do that. We used to play basketball all day. And, and, and me and uh, Mr. Freeland, man, we, we get up all day. We did it for fun. <laughs> I would literally play probably six hours. Six hours. All we needed was something to drink. Wouldn't eat. <laughs> Go to different courts all over the city, especially when I have my car. Can't do that no more. I, you have to uh, call the EMT <laughs> after the, the second hour. <laughs> uh, 
called emergency because our these bodies are dissolving. As we think about the New Year, Saints, we want to think about going back to my message on Christmas, redeeming the time, taking advantage of the time that we have. Uh, we, we read from Ecclesiastes, it said this, there's a time to be born, there's a time to die. Our concern right now is what we do between those two, between the time we are born, between the time we die. So I love the new year because it reminds us to continue, keep on keeping on, make a new start, do better, rise, and draw closer to the Lord. I, that's why I like, we're going into 2023, and we think about it from a spiritual standpoint. Think about things from a spiritual standpoint um, that we would, uh, <laughs> I'm listening to Madison, uh, we would think about growing this particular body is dissolving. We don't mean that in a negative way, but it's a reality check. It's a reminder that we have to do what we're going to do while we're here. And that's why I like the New Year's. That's what I started to say. It reminds us to, uh, that we, we have a short time, and uh, let's redeem the time. Let's love each other even the more. Let's seek God like we was doing yesterday. We were showing up seeking him yesterday. We were showing up. It was some earnest folk in here that was loving on God and, and uh, really uh, seeking him. Hearts were, 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 were rendered. People's head was bowed down. We was in that word. And we want to not just do it on New Year's Eve, but continue in that way. And I heard Brother Child, Brother Child brought a little message yesterday. And um, she was saying that we got to get to praying. And we, we've been doing that on Thursdays. So if you haven't been used to coming out on Thursday, come, come back out on Thursday. If you can't come out physically, we're going to be sending a Zoom link out. And all you got to do, at least on my phone, is click that link and it'll take you right to our prayer, right to our Bible study. We're trying some new things with technology. Um, and, and join in with us. Join in the women's prayer on Saturdays. Uh, the Bible says in verse 2, well, let me finish up verse 1. We have a building. The Bible is using these metaphors. When I use say the word metaphor, I mean something that is symbolic that represents something else. It uses the word, it's used um, construction metaphors and housing metaphors to describe this body. It says earthly house. It's talking about our body, like Sister Duke said. Tabernacle is a tent. Brother David talks about the tabernacle. That means it's temporary. One of the things about a tent, Kaylin and, and uh, Gabriella, good to see y'all. Happy New Year. Uh, one of the things about a tent is temporary. A tent is temporary. When you go out camping, your tent ain't going to be there for no two, three years. Your tent is going to be there. And I don't like it's too many. Uh, bugs and animals out there camping. I'm not a camper. I like to, if I go out in the woods, I want to be in a cabin at least. <laughs> but some people, I got some people at work, they love camping. They own, their idea of vacation is camping. <laughs> I'm like, what y'all doing for the holidays? We're gonna go camping. I'll be like, what? <laughs> I need some weapons if I'm gonna go camping. <laughs> Uh, I need to be able to defend myself. And, uh, but uh, the thing about the tent, you see that word tabernacle? That means tent. Okay, it's a long word that means tent. And it's talking about the tabernacle that the children of Israel had in the Old Testament. They were, every, they were a nomadic people, which means they went from place to place. And they would pitch a tent at different places. And the, Paul is very brilliant in using that metaphor for our bodies, it's temporary. The world don't like to think about that. Remember that song from the 80s? And uh, what's her name? Kara, I can't remember her last name. Remember the, the, the song, uh, Fame, Flashdance? Remember the movie Flashdance? You know, uh, and I, I, only a certain generation is gonna remember that. But the song said, Fame, I'm gonna live forever. I'm gonna learn how to fly. That's mythology. <laughs> I understand what they're saying, remember my name, but 
you are not going to be thinking about your name and then your fame when you are in the grave or when you in, in eternity. You know, uh, we're not going to live forever. The world likes to, don't like to think about we have limited time. That's why I'm glad it's January 1st because it's a symbolic reminder. There's technically, and I'm going to mess some odd body up, there, there's nothing different about today and yesterday except that it's the past. But there's not a whole lot of difference between January 1st and uh, December 31st. <laughs> there's not a whole lot of difference, just a symbolic date change and it helps us. It should help us as Christians to make a fresh start. We should just, you know, we're, we're not like the world anyway, um, where they see it as the biggest party night of the year. That's not us anyway. And so it should be a reminder for us, like, well, let me, let me see some things I can work on. And we should be saying, Lord, work on me. We shouldn't always have our fingers pointing at somebody else. What are they talking about my son or sister child or my children? No, we should point that thing at ourselves. Lord, what can I do to grow? How can I grow in you? Am I praying enough? And I, I say this all the time. People are quick to say, especially church folk, well, I praise every day. You know, we get all self-righteous about it. I, I already pray enough. If you say that in your head, you, you're missing the point. This is a progressive work. You can always do more for the Lord. You can always grow. We're going to continue to grow until we go to heaven. So that means there's some other, something else you could be doing. Especially if we're not perfect. Nobody in here is perfect. So we always, the Lord is going to continue to sanctify us and purify our hearts. Make us love more. Make us more patient. Make us more diligent with our time. It's, it's, it's bad to waste time. Just to wake up and not do nothing all day. Time is more precious. Than, did you know time is more precious than a, a big diamond this big? Uh, multi-million dollar diamond, time is more precious. Time is more precious than a quarter of a million dollars. Time is more valuable. You could take a millionaire or a billionaire that's 90 years old, and he would gladly give a billion dollars to be 30 again, or 40, or even 50, or 60. A person that's 90, they would gladly give a billion dollars to go back 10 years to their 80s when they were 80. That shows you, that gives you an idea of how precious time is. And so I've been sort of camped out in this idea of redeeming the time. Lord, keep dealing with me on that. And I'm almost done. I woke up this morning and I said this, Sister Flakes. I said, I'm going to let them go early. <laughs> I'm going to see if I can keep my word, Brother Charlie. Amen. For in this we grown earnestly desiring to be clothed. Look at verse two. For this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from the earth. Let me move on to 17 before I get stuck on that part. Therefore, if any man or woman be in Christ, he is a new creature. This is the teaching of holiness, y'all. We should be different from the world. I'm so weary of so-called carnal Christians. I'm not the Lord to judge anybody, but I'm just weary of the teaching that you can do anything you want and still be saved. You got people like Beyonce, and I'm not, you know, I don't know what she do. I just, I mean, I don't know her personally, but I see her, um, I do see what she do on videos, and, and, uh, and she's always provocative and, and sexual, and she's supposed to have a husband. And then she'd get right on there and say that she's a Christian. And then you have Christians defending her. There would be ministers saying, oh, you don't know. You know, I had a preacher correct me, trying to correct me. I said, I'm not, I, I don't have a hell or heaven to put her in, but the Bible says we know her by her fruit. And she would get up there and people would say she's a Christian. She ref if that represents Christ, I don't want that Christ. I want the Bible, the biblical Jesus. <laughs> The one that's, you know, the one that's a, my savior. The one that can redeem me from my sin. The great deliverer. The one I can talk to. The doctor in the sick room. The lawyer in the courtroom. Hallelujah. That's the Jesus I want. Not the one where I'm going to still be in my sins. The Bible says you're a new creature. Verse 17. 
And that's newness, that word new is a great word to talk about the new year, to help us with new creatures. And, and it's not just metaphorical. When you get saved, you should be, there's a change in you. There's a change, and if you're doing this, if you're still doing the same things, if you're doing the exact same thing that the world is doing, smoking, drinking, cursing, uh, you know, sleeping around, revisit the altar. Seek God about it. Call call the saints and let us pray with you. There should be a difference. Because you don't want to you don't want to go before God. Your life ain't right and you thought it was right. You don't want to be standing there. I'm not gonna be I wish I could be well. I was his pastor. I was her pastor for 10, 20 years. And far as I know, <laughs> far as I know she was living right. I don't know Jesus. I wish I could do that. Well look, Jesus, here goes some pictures. From the Christmas party, look, he said right there. I wish I could pull out a portfolio for the Lord when you go to the pearly gates, but I'm not gonna be there. I'm gonna have to work, work on my own salvation with fear and trembling, as the Bible says. And so you got to get them right for yourself. You gotta get Jesus for yourself. Get this thing right. Don't sit up all under this teaching and miss heaven. That's gonna be a mighty sad day. If you sit up all under this teaching, and we, we teach sound doctrine here. We don't, I didn't grow up flimsy, and I don't even know how to teach flimsy doctrine. <laughs> all I could teach is what they gave me, <laughs> what I was taught. Amen. Don't sit up under all this teaching and miss heaven. I'm trying to tell you, let this be your year to grow in the Lord and, 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 and uh, be a mature Christian. Let this be your year to grow in the Lord and and come off the milk. The Lord got something for you to do. The Lord got something for you. Some of y'all have some amazing testimonies. Where the devil brought you, where the devil had you, and where the Lord brought you from on today. Oh my goodness, if people could see your movie, it'll be, your life, it'll be a movie. Let the Lord use your testimony. Amen. Let him grow you so he can go ahead and use you. And uh, to help somebody else, the Lord got something for you. Let this be your year to grow. I'm already seeing such progress in the saints. I'm seeing, I'm seeing a side of uh, growth in people that I haven't seen in a long time. And it's so encouraging to me. The Lord, I see the Lord working in your life. Amen. But let me, let me wrap up so I can keep my word. If any man be in Christ, the new creature. Look at this. Old things are passed away. Let's leave those old things in 2022. And, and sometimes your, your, uh, your loved ones will bring up the past. That's the devil, too. People try to hold you to your past. Remember, you used to be the main one. And that's, that was sometimes 10, 15, 20 years ago. And um, they will keep bringing that and throwing it in your face. Let's leave that in the past. The only thing you need to worry about the past is not repeating it. You know, if the Lord brought you from a mighty long way. But it says, old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. All. Somebody say all. All things become new. The way you speak. The way you dress. The people you hang out with. You know, you say, well, I'm trying to witness to them. If you're not strong enough to witness to them, they'll end up pulling you back. And so it's time for us to come out from among them and be ye separate. And all things are of God, who have reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and have given us the ministry of reconciliation. I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to close my scripture out here. Amen. We thank you for um, being with us. Here we go with, with another year. Amen. And uh, we just encouraged about what God is doing. Um, and it seems like on, on, it's always like this on New Year's Day, though. Um, People stay home and all that. It's, <laughs> people tired. Well, what it is? We tired from being at church all day. I don't know why other people tired. I don't know. <laughs> I wasn't there, but <laughs> hey, Amen. But I will keep my word, y'all. Um, we're going to send some announcements out. I'm not going. We're gonna, not going to do no announcements today. What I do want you to do is um, continue. Let's step up our giving in 2023. I'm not a money person. I don't know. I don't say much about money. But those online, you can give to dollar, dollar sign Antioch Men. 
Antioch, the spelling of our church, M-I-N, capital M-I-N, Antioch, man, dollar sign, M-I-N. Uh, dollar sign, Antioch, M-I-N. Or you can go online and on our Facebook page and uh, give to give a five. God bless you. Let's stand. Uh, as promised, I said we weren't going to be long. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. I pray. May the Lord bless you. May. If there's somebody that desires prayer, I don't want to leave without praying for somebody that needs prayer. I'm going to ask every eye to be closed, every head to be bowed. If you desire prayer, just lift your hands up so that we can see you and identify you. Amen. There's one. Hallelujah. There's another. Amen. Young people. Hallelujah. God bless you. There's somebody else. Lord, look on those young men. Hallelujah. One of the young men that raised his hand, he told me what he needed to pray, pray about. Lord, I ask that you work that thing out, Lord, that you work on his heart, Lord, just like you did me, Lord. Hallelujah. Just like you did me in, in, in my struggles with forgiveness and anger, Lord, that you will work it out. Let the Holy Ghost cleanse his spirit, Lord, cleanse his mind, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Help us work through those emotions, Lord. Help us to learn to lean on you, Lord. As we go into this new year, 2023, hallelujah, let it be a year of growth for these young people, Lord. Lord, I see you working in their life already. I can't shape them in my image. I can't lead them. All I can do is point them to you and lead them to Christ. Lord, because you have a plan for these youth. I ask that you bless them right now, Lord. Let them find employment. They're right on the edge of graduation. Some have graduated already, and they're in that space where they're trying to figure out who they are and, and, and what it is that they do and where they fit in. Let the church be that place where they find where they fit in, Lord. Let them, help them with their career, Lord. Us adults, we already have figured some things out, Lord. But they're just now coming into this world, Lord, and finishing school, Lord. We pray earnestly that you would let these folks find gainful employment, and find where they fit in and learn a trade and get a degree, whatever it is that you call them to do, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless them in the way that only you can bless them, Lord. Hallelujah. We pray for sister, the dear sister that raised her hand, Lord. Hallelujah. She's, she's such a walking testimony. I'm just going to say, Sister Duke, she's such a walking testimony. Lord, that she's one of the ones I said that you can use her testimony. The people who knew her story, they would fill up the whole church, Lord. Hallelujah. Continue to let her be out there in the highways and the hedges. Bless her family. And, and Lord, take away those that influence her that are no, no good for her life, Lord. Take those individuals out of her life. Surround her with your goodness and with the people of God. In Jesus' name, Lord, bless us all together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those that are listening. Bless right now, Lord. Let them feel your spirit even right now as we pray. As we say, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank We're dismissing you, Lord. I just want to thank you. Thank you.
make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen. Happy New Year. Happy New Year.